Cynic Snacks is arguably the UK's greatest movie reviewer on YouTube right now. Focusing predominantly on low budget bootleg and rip-off films, Cynic Snacks provides a unique aesthetic and a huge amount of visual quality which other film review channels just cannot compete with. Driven predominantly by comedy, Cynic Snacks uses his videos to take his viewers on a journey through some of the worst films the world has to offer, as well as providing a few videos on more niche topics in his series Screen Peeves. Being one of the fastest growing channels I've personally witnessed in real time, I thought it would be interesting and enlightening to explore the rise of Cynic Snacks. One of Cynic Snack's most defining features is how he presents himself through animation. The effort and quality put into creating such an eye-catching visual aesthetic has probably been a huge draw for a lot of his viewers. This love for animation began at a very young age. When Cynic Snacks first began animating, he used MS Paint to draw things and then flick through the drawings to create an animation. By the age of 9, Cynic Snacks had already created enough of these to make an entire DVD. Needless to say, his quality has improved a bit since then. Later on, Cynic Snacks would go to film university in the UK, but states he learned considerably more working on sets for low budget TV shows. These shows weren't particularly good, but they did provide Cynic Snacks with his first ideas for a YouTube channel named Confessions of a Crummy Kid. This channel would create videos around some of the weird and interesting stories Cynic Snacks had accumulated through working on various sets. Videos for this channel never left the initial scripting phase though. Cynic Snacks' time on TV sets also provided him with skills and knowledge to start his own production company which created promotional content for businesses, musicians and music festivals. However, Cynic Snacks would eventually decide to focus on animation. This ended up being an excellent move as he was picked up by quite a few high profile companies. If you'd like to hear more about these companies, more about Cynic Snacks pre-YouTube days, or more about the man himself in general, I highly recommend watching his video called Why Quit Working for Disney. It was the main reference for this segment and it was a great watch for any followers of Cynic Snacks. However, let's move on to talking about the man's YouTube channel beginnings. And here to talk to you about that is good friend of the channel Doplex. Uh, Cynic Snacks, the pizza that God himself kneaded and baked in the oven. Cynic Snacks' channel was created on February 14th of 2018, and only a month after that, he dropped his first video titled, This bootleg movie was so bad I had to set it on fire. The video outlines the unfortunate nature of the film Alien Contagion. It's a horror film that blatantly rips off Alien Covenant, and, uh, well, quite frankly, it's a total dumpster fire. From visual inconsistencies to nonsensical behaviors, Alien Contagion has a wide variety of just shit that Cynic Snacks can then rip apart. While the video holds its own as a genuinely quality beginning for his channel, it has other significant features too. For starters, it laid down the foundations for Cynic Snacks' first series, Junk Film Review, which would go on to be his most prominent series and currently has two seasons. The video not only introduces us to Cynic Snacks, but also his good real-life buddy, Tom, who is represented by a soda cup. Tom contributes a considerable amount of films to Cynic Snacks for him to make content on. More importantly though, it signified the existence of characters besides Cynic Snacks. I mean, we've seen time and time again how prominent side characters can have a positive effect on a YouTube channel, with channels like Filthy Frank and even my own videos. Being a talented animator means the possibilities in this department are endless for future videos, including a unique way to present guests such as when I was on the show. Yeah, he uh, drew me as a sushi rito. It's a sushi burrito. Uh, I have guacamole for hair. It's pretty adorable. It's pretty cool. So you should go watch it. It's nin the ninja one. Cynic Snacks, if you're watching this, uh, uh, poopy. Poopy stinky. <laughs> that's, that's my message to you. Congrats on all your success, buddy. I think you're doing great, and uh, your, your talents, uh, they, they know no bounds. You're getting better by the day. And Boomerang, thanks for, for having me on. Thanks for letting me do this thing. From here, Cynic Snacks would continue to create junk film review videos, and would also introduce a new series called Screen Peeves in his video on the most overused sound effects. Screen Peeves is a series where Cynic Snacks looks at a specific thing that really annoys him. By his own admission, his first video in the series on an overused crowd cheering sound effect didn't do too well view wise, and was his worst performing video for quite some time. However, this didn't stop him producing more of the series in the future, which we'll talk about later. Other notable videos from Cynic Snacks' first year on YouTube include junk film review videos on films such as Damn Sea Vampires and Dr. Giggles, as well as his actual worst movies 2018 video. This is one of my personal favourites. It's 30 minutes long, but he talks about a lot of awful films, so it ends up feeling quite fast paced. I also really enjoyed the wide variety of DVD disposal methods. It really feels like he upped the ante for this one in that department. 
Mid-2019 would see the beginning of Season 2 of Junk Film Reviews, and a brand new series called Junk Hall Tour. The premiere video of this series involved the man behind Cynic Snacks in real life going to Brighton and buying a bunch of low-cost films. He then does quickish reviews of all of them. Currently this series only has one episode, and I'm not really sure why. It was a perfectly enjoyable video. My best bet is simply that Cynic Snacks' collection of awful films is so big now that there's no need to go out and buy loads for one video. Whatever the reason, I'd love to see more of these in the future. It's important to note that everything up to this point has been of the highest quality. From his initial video on Alien Contagion, to his one on video game movie adaptations, which was released on the 1st of December 2019, everything was what you'd expect from Cynic Snacks. Insanely high visual quality and a great sense of humour, a bunch of films I'd never heard of, and a trained eye for absolute nonsense. Most people could watch these films and see that they are awful, but with the experience Nick Snacks went through, he's able to pick up on some absurdities some others might miss. But despite all of this quality and effort, by the start of 2020, Cynic Snacks only accumulated 17,000 subscribers. That's nothing to scoff at. 17,000 is a hell of a lot of people, but it's nowhere near enough to sustain yourself through YouTube. And on the basis of comparing Cynic Snacks videos to the average content you see on the site, he probably deserved a fair few more subscribers. Luckily, that's exactly what he got. One ever-present factor on Cynic Snacks' channel was that he'd usually discuss obscure films. Stuff like Captain Battle Legacy War is a film I would never have wanted to discover unless it was through the lens of a Cynic Snacks video. However, on January 30th, 2020, he decided to mix things up by releasing a video about a high-profile film you've probably heard of and forgotten about. That film was Zombieland 2. Now I saw this at the cinema, and I thought it was fine. I enjoyed the first film, and this one was fun, albeit a bit uninspired. This was the general consensus, and as previously mentioned, this film was forgotten about in T-1 second, but people generally thought it was okay. This was not the opinion of Cynic Snacks. He was not a fan at all, and some quotes from his review include, Chore to watch. There's no excuse for this movie being so fucking crap, boring and lazy. And, A mainstream movie which filled me with such a passionate rage. Going against the grain of the average review perspective in his usual polished manner while supplying some credible points and releasing this video on the same day as the film's release to DVD, all came together to make this video moderately successful. Compared to his previous work, this Zombieland 2 video got him tens of thousands of more views, and over a thousand thousand more subs per week. Most importantly though, these new viewers and subs all created an upward trend on Cynic Snacks' channel and gave him a huge amount of momentum. Because of this, Cynic Snacks knew it was imperative to get his next video out as fast as possible to catch this wave. He needed to capitalise off all these new eyes on his channel. Therefore, on the 26th of February, he released a video on the Mummy franchise. Or to be particular, The Mummy Rebirth. An absolutely horrendous knockoff sequel to the main films. This choice of topic was an absolute stroke of genius. It enticed these new viewers who came for a well-known sequel with another well-established film series. However, reviewing the poorly acted and horrifically written knockoff film, The Mummy Rebirth gave Cynic Snacks a platform to showcase what his channel was all about to these new viewers. The video had the usual low-budget knockoff film you'd expect for junk film reviews. This allowed Cynic Snacks to showcase his brand of comedy and his eye for terrible filmmaking. This video also performed extremely well, and now Cynic Snacks had two videos both pulling in a ton of new viewers. In fact, you could argue that the Mummy Rebirth video was even more successful than the Zombieland 2 video. This is the bump Cynic Snacks got from the Zombieland 2 video, and this is the explosion that occurred after the Mummy video. It absolutely catapulted Cynic Snacks' channel, and there there is an explanation for this. Both videos would bring in brand new viewers who would enjoy one of those videos and then be pushed the other video by the algorithm. This would lead to brand new viewers finding Cynic Snacks channel and watching other videos too. The Zombieland and Mummy videos would have set the bar very high in the mind of the viewers. Their initial impression would have been that this YouTuber creates incredibly well produced videos, which are both comedic and entertaining. That's what they would have expected, and that's exactly what they got with the rest of the channel. From the very beginning, from the very first video, it's clear to see that not only were the videos incredibly high quality, but also that the channel has remained thematically stable and consistent. All of this in combination created the binge effect. The binge effect is something I've discussed previously in my Nakey Jakey video. Sitting down and just watching a ton of videos by the same creator is how someone becomes completely invested in that YouTuber. It leaves a lasting impression, and when you're done you're always looking for future uploads. This is what happened to Cynic Snacks' channel with a huge number of people all at once. However, despite the entire channel getting a huge boost, there was one video new viewers were choosing to watch considerably more than the rest. 
That video was the original Screen Peeves video on the most overused sound effect. Despite its low viewership at the time, people were really, really intrigued by this video. Maybe it's because new viewers wanted to try out all of the unique series. Or maybe it's because the video was only 6 minutes long, which is considerably shorter than the rest of the channel. Regardless of why people chose this video to watch over the rest on his channel, the algorithm noticed that people wanted to watch it. Therefore, the first ever episode of Screen Peeves was pushed to absolutely everyone. And now Cynic Snacks had a third video Video bringing in brand new viewers to his channel. This video was so popular that it went from Cynic Snack's least viewed video to his most viewed video, currently sitting at 1.5 million views. And I think there's a lesson to be learned from this. When you put out a video and it doesn't do very well, that's not a reason to be down or view that video as bad. As long as you make the best video you can and you're proud of it, or even if you just think it's entertaining, you never know how important that video could be to your channel. This success has even influenced Cynic Snack's videos going forward. He's created multiple Screen Peeve since in an attempt to capitalise on its popularity with even more success. One of his most recent Screen Peeves, Misconduct, CGI Replicas and De-Aging, The Death of Hollywood, is now his second most viewed video. As of right now, Cynic Snack's channel has been steadily climbing in popularity. This is all due to a couple smart decisions at the right time, and a consistently high quality content output from the very beginning. But despite his exceptionally fast growth this year, it's clear to see this is set to continue, and the rise of Cynic Snacks has only just begun. Gun. Before making this video, I was lucky enough to talk to Cynic Snacks about his channel. This is the first time I've been able to do this in the Rise Of series, and it came with some interesting tidbits. For starters, when Cynic Snacks' channel was exploding, there were a couple of videos that didn't get quite as many views as the rest. All of these videos had one thing in common they were all demonetized. I doubt you need any more evidence that YouTube actively pushed monetize over demonetized videos. But here is some more, I guess. It's very clear to see. Also, what gave me the idea to make a video about Cynic Snacks was when I saw him on the Cold Ones podcast. I was extremely surprised when I saw him on there, and I had to ask him how that affected his channel. To my amazement, he said it had almost no impact at all. According to Cynic Snacks, working with people like Cold Ones and Nerd City does have a lot of benefits, but channel growth simply wasn't one of them. Because of the chat we had, I wanted to say a big thank you to Cynic Snacks for all the information he provided. Without it, this video would not have been possible. Also, a big thank you to Doplex for his segment in the video. Doplex creates some of the best videos on the site in his Internet Oddities series where he'd talk your ear off about a number of unique internet personalities. Or even recently, he created an incredibly awesome Choose Your Own Adventure video featuring a bunch of the best boys. So if you're not following this guy, that actually makes no sense. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.